Hi everyone, Lisa Gifford here, and today I'm going to show you how to make the bunny ear basket with the matching bow tie. Those of you who got the kit received quite a few things in it. You would have received the brand new bunny ear template with the bow tie. So there's two templates that came in it. You would have came with about a half a yard of two different fabrics, one for the outer fabric, one for the lining. You would have also received a couple of pieces of vinyl, the instructions, and you would have got some fusible fleece with this one and a ribbon. So I'm going to show you how all of these items fit together. Now in the written instructions, I talked about the two different ways that you can make the bunny ear basket. You can make it as with the bow tie that's made out of the vinyl. I'm also going to show you how you can also make the bow tie with just fabric. So like a little scrap of fabric. Um, this also can be done where you have raw edges for the ears or you can go ahead and finish off the ears by stitching them all in and then just flipping it out and then top stitching those. But today we're gonna to work on showing you how to do it where we're gonna have the, um, the raw edges where you're gonna use your pinking shears. So some of the tools that you'll find that are gonna be very necessary or helpful in making this project is of course the, four, um, this one I'm using the 28 millimeter instead of the 45 millimeter rotary cutter. I found it works a little bit better for going around the curves that you find in the main bunny ear template. Uh, of course, I've got some pinking shears. Of course, I'm using the Martelli pinking shears, some regular scissors, some snips here. One of my favorite tools is the duck bill applique scissors. So I'll be using these. Um, I use this little tool because I like to trim away my excess uh, material, my excess uh, foam or fleece, whatever I'm using to trim it away to kind of reduce the bulk. And then of course I have my knitting needle that helps me with the turning. I have a turning tool. I have some clips. I have this sheet right here that I use for, for pressing because on my instructions, I talked about two one way to attach your fusible to the fabric, but I'm gonna show you another quick trick by using this. And then a hot glue gun also works really well with this project and because you, it's gonna help hold everything in place when we go to make the bunny ears. So in your kit, you would, you would receive a lot of these things that I already talked about, but I'm gonna show you a couple different examples that I have right here. So this one right here, I'm showing you here, is made with the, with the, um, the vinyl for the, the uh, bow tie but I used foam. So you can use foam, you can use fleece. So this one here is with the foam. So it gives it a little bit more sturdiness for standing up. This one here is like the one I'm being, we're doing today where I've got the heavyweight fusible fleece in here to make this one. Again, you see, I just pinked it. And then this one here, same exact same fabrics, I used a lightweight fleece. So I wanted you to see the kind of the difference in using the different fleeces. This one doesn't stand up quite as well, but it works very well for the smaller of a project. If this would have been much bigger, you would not have been able to do that. Now I want to show you a couple other examples. So here's where I finished off the bow tie, where I'd sewed it. This one here is just a single layer of the vinyl. This one here, again, a finished where I had uh, used the fabric to make the bow tie. This one I did a little bit different. I took that template and I moved it up as I was cutting it to make my ears longer. This one is done with the fleece. It's a little bit floppier. Here is where I've used uh, some real pretty vinyls and I used a double layer vinyl. You don't have to use a double layer. A single layer I found works very well if you're using the, uh, the vinyls. And another thing that I added was Martelli has these awesome elliptical templates, but they're the, our Easter eggs. So I used some of that vinyl and then I just sewed them on. So I'll show you the point when we go to make these where I would sew them on. They're, they're, it's very simple. So if you don't have the elliptical templates and you want to use them for doing some applique, be sure to pick up the elliptical templates and just cut them up out of the vinyl. You can cut them out of fabric and then you just applique them on. So here's, uh, let's see, we just got just a bunch of different ones here where I didn't even use the bow tie with this one. I used to use a, a wider ribbon just to tie it. So there's a little trick to that. So we're going to go over all of that and how I put all of these together. And they actually go together really quickly. So you'll be able to make these up, a whole bunch of them up in no time. So I am going to go ahead and set a lot of these aside. So you would have got the full written instructions in here so you can follow along completely as the written instructions are, but I'm also gonna show you a couple tricks that kind of make things a little bit easier. So if you're gonna do the fabric for your bow tie, 
I kind of recommend adding a little bit of SF 101 just to give that fabric a little bit of body. You don't have to, but I found it just kind of made that bow tie, the fabric bow ties a little bit crisper. So I'm going to set these aside. So here's the two of the fabrics that you would have got in your kit. And you would have got, of course, the vinyls, different vinyls. And then, of course, you would have got the heavyweight fusible fleece. And if you cut these right, you should be able to make, if you got the kit, at least two baskets out of it, depending on um, if it was a fabric that has a directional to it. And you got to pay attention to that a directional fabric because you don't want your bunnies or anything to be upside down. So one of the hints that I would suggest is get your fabrics out and get them completely ironed nice and flat. You don't want to have any wrinkles in them. And then if you are working with a fabric like the one I'm going to show you right here, it does have a directional to it. So you want to be sure to cut it the right way. And then with your lining fabric, since you're going to be cutting out two pieces for the lining and two pieces for the outer fabric, once you have your fabric ironed, go ahead and place it right sides together. So you're going to have Here's your right side. You're going to place it right sides together to cut out your two pieces. I found it was easier once I have them already cut out with my right sides together because literally I just take it and then I go to the sewing machine and we start sewing it. So I'm going to kind of set some of these things out of my way. And we're going to get started on cutting one of these out. And you're going to be cutting two for the lining and two for the, the body. So with your template, You'll notice on your template that it's got these cut lines that are right here. So it makes it very easy for you to use your rotor cutter to cut through here and, and be able to get you without cutting. In a, and they're, they're it's just right so you're not going to be cutting into your seam allowance. So here's my two pieces of fabric, right sides together. And I'm just going to lay my template on here. And if I was to just kind of flip it back and forth, I could easily cut out three, three sets. But we're just going to cut out the one set. So I just have it on here so that I make sure I've got all the fabric all lined up underneath. And grabbing my 28 millimeter rotary cutter, open it up, and we're going to go ahead and just kind of make sure I don't have nothing under there. I'm just going to go ahead and cut this out. Using that 28 millimeter makes it so much easier to cut around this gentle curve here. I'm just going to go ahead and pull that out. All right, so there's my extra. We'll set that aside. And then just rotate it around and just finished getting your cuts done. Now, when you're cutting into your points right here, be very careful. Always be sure to have your fingers out of the way so that you don't accidentally jump over the cut line and catch yourself. I've had that happen once or twice. So now I always try to make sure I have my fingers my hand out of the way in the direction that that rotary cutter is going. So there's nothing else that has to be done with this. It is ready to go to go to the sewing. So I'm just going to take it and I'm just going to set it over here. Cool. We'll be sewing that up in just a second. Now, on the instructions, I tell you to go ahead and cut out your two pieces for your um, for your outer piece. Now I kept this one where it is wrong sides together so I can see the direction of where the bunnies are going in this one. So I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna go ahead and get this one cut out. And because of the magic of the Martelli templates, you can just rotate it around to finish your cutting. Now, if you didn't get the kit, you only need about a fat quarter to make the, um, the outer fabric and a fat quarter for your lining. Keep my fingers out of the way. And there's all the little pieces. So here's my two main fabrics here. So you don't need the template anymore for this part. Now in the instructions, I actually talk about go ahead and cutting out the fleece using your template for the fleece and then taking your fabric and centering it 
on here and ironing that down. Just centering it on here and iron it down. Well, here's what I like to do. I'm going to go over to the ironing board. I'm going to show you. So let's walk over to the ironing station. Now, because I like to trim away all of my excess material, I like to make sure I don't have it much sealed along these edges here. So I focus more on making sure my iron, and since I know that this is going to be raw edge, I would iron very well here, and I would lightly iron here because I want to be able to pull away that fusible so I get it trimmed up. But another way is to just take your piece and lay it on top of your uh, piece right here, on top of the um, fusible with the glue side up. And this is where you use your a pressing sheet or a piece of parchment paper, and I just lay this over top, and then I, I iron it, I iron heavily on the top, and then just lightly iron it on the bottom, just to get it to adhere. I really want it to adhere more on the top, but not so much here, because I want to be able to pull this away. And then you go ahead with your scissors and trim this up, or another quick hint, is to go ahead and bring your template back into play. So this is where you could use the template one more time. You could lay the template right back on top and cut all the way around, or just grab some scissors and just trim it. And I'm just gonna go ahead and trim it. So I'm just gonna follow right along the edge here and trim it off. So now I have my two pieces. You're gonna repeat that for both of them so you'll have both of your pieces all ready to go with your fusible. On here. So the next step is doing some sewing. So what you're going to do is you're going to take your two pieces and you're going to place them right sides together and matching up all of your edges and you're going to do some sewing. Since I'm leaving this part open, I'm just going to stitch here and here and across the bottom. I'm going to repeat that also for our lining and then we're going to go ahead and get our bottoms boxed. So now we'll go ahead and go to the sew machine and get some sewing done. So the two things that I like to use is this little tool right here. It's going to help separate the fleece from the fabric. So I can use my uh, little tool right here to trim away my um, applique scissors. So I'm going to go ahead and get everything all lined up. Now I'm going to teach you another little quick trick for the bottom. If we sew the bottom on the outer piece first, and I have my, my machine set at a quarter inch seam allowance, Threads wrapped around. I'm going to sew across the bottom right here. And I'm not even worrying about back tacking because that seam is going to be closed up into the, um, when we go to box it. So I'm just going to sew straight across. Now here's what I was talking about. Because I didn't sew it very hard, or uh, press it, I'm able to lift up that fleece from the fabric on both sides. So I'm pressing it open and I am pulling away that fleece and separating it from the fabric. So I'm going to go in there and I'm going to trim that off. So you just kind of get your little tool in there and I'm just going to slide it along the edge there to separate it. Peeling it away. Using my tool to kind of help push it out. And I found by doing this, you're not going to have that balk and it's going to sit a little flatter. Now what I'm going to show you, a little trick that I had learned to even make it sit a little flatter once we uh, get, get, get to that point. So we're going to do it right here. So I'm going to take my, my little scissors these are my applique scissors, my duck bills, and I'm just going to trim away all of this excess material right here. I'm, I'm kind of holding down with my fingernail the fabric, and I'm sliding along and trimming all this excess material away. I'm getting right up against those stitches, but not clipping my stitches. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Now this little 
This next little hint I'm going to show you is not in the written instructions, but I'm going to show you why I really like doing this. So now we're going back to the ironing station. I'm going to kind of take my iron and I'm going to kind of open up that seam right there. And I'm just going to hit it with my iron right here just to kind of open it up. Flip it over and I'm going to hit it right here. Now here's where I learned we'll make it say a little bit flatter. Then I'm going to run a stitch, maybe a zigzag stitch right across that seam. So I'm going to set this on a zigzag and I'm just going to zigzag across it and it's just going to help it lay just a little bit flatter. And I kind of want it to be a big wide stitch. Now we're going to go ahead and finish the rest of our sewing. So now we're just going to go ahead and put our machine back to where we were. And I'm going to match up my two sides and go stitch down both sides. Now I do back tack at the top up here, but I don't worry about back tacking on the bottom. And I'm going to flip it over and match up these sides and do the same thing. Back tack on the top. Now I'm doing the same thing. I'm going to separate that fleece from the fabric. Do that on both sides and get that all separated. So we're going to trim that off. And going ahead and getting my scissors, my little applique scissors again, my duck bills. And same thing, I'm going to hold it back with my fingernail and I'm just going to clip all that excess off. All four pieces. Being careful to not clip your stitches and not clip your fabric. Now, before you would even, if you were going to applique this down, like if you were going to applique some of the eggs, you would actually have applique those before you go to stitching it all together. But we're not putting an applique on this one. You would have your fusible on it, and then before you go to stitch the two pieces front and back together, just go ahead and applique those down and then sew them down. Now we're going to go ahead and box it. So in the instructions, I basically just say to open it up. So you're matching up these seams here, the seam that was on the side, you're matching it up with the seam that's on the bottom. Kind of flattening that out, matching up that seam, and you can have that seam kind of nest if you didn't do that stitch on the bottom, and then you're just gonna sew a quarter inch all the way across, and you're going to back tack on the front and on the end. And then repeat that for the other side. Matching up the seams, flattening it down, and stitching a quarter inch across, back tacking front and back. And if you want, you could do the same thing. You could loosen up that fleece and trim away that excess material here and here. So I'm going to go ahead and get some of that excess material. I found that just kind of makes it pop just a little bit by getting some of that excess material out of the way. And we're not doing any top stitching, but I just find by removing some of this, it helps it have more of a sharper edge. So separate it and nip that off. Okay, so now this basket, the outer part is complete. So you just go ahead and flip it out, push out your corners, 
push it out, push it out. And this piece is, is complete. Now if you wanted, you can go back over the iron, maybe get some of these wrinkles, get everything all smoothed out. But this is done. This is all that we're going to be doing on this piece. So now we're going to take our lining. Now because we had already cut it out and we cut them out where we have the right sides together, it's all ready to go just to get our sewing done. So I'm going to sew along both of the sides and across the bottom. Quarter inch all the way around. And I'm going to back tack on the top. Kind of almost chain piece in this across. And then coming up to the last side. Alrighty. And just like we did the other, we're going to go ahead and open it up and match up our seams and kind of nest them so you can have one going to the left, one going to the right, whichever way you feel comfortable. Just nest them in and then same thing, get it nice and flat and stitch a quarter inch all the way across, back tacking on both sides. Now we're going to get that done for the other side. Same thing. Now I always like to see what direction this seam is going so I can lay that in the direction for nesting up the seams. I like to see which direction the bottom seam is going so I can lay that without it being turned. And we're going to go ahead and stitch that across. All right, so that is done. So that that's that's completed. So keeping it as we sewed it, I just tuck this down in here like this. Pushing my points to the at bottoms on both sides. And this is where you're going to start using some clips to clip everything in place. So let me grab my clips real quick. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to match up my seams, my side seams, looking at the direction that everything's going and nest up the seams, match them up. And I do both of my seams first, lining up all the edges. And then do the same thing on this side. Nesting up that seam. Right like this, and put a clip in that spot. Now we're going to go ahead and match up the top of my ears. Put a clip up here. And just kind of follow the edges along, matching up the curves to the edge. Because we're going to stitch all the way around and then we're going to clip it with our pinking shears. Now in the instructions, I have it where everything is a quarter of an inch except this part right here. I think I go a little bit more than a quarter of an inch, but not quite a half inch. Maybe about three eighths of an inch. I go a little bit wider stitch length of stitch with all the way around because then I'm going to be trimming it up with my uh, pinking shears. All right, so everything is all clipped. So the next step is just to sew all the way around. So I have this on a quarter of an inch, so I just move my, uh, my stitch width over just a little bit. And so I can have not quite a half of an inch, but more like three eighths of an inch. And I like to, when I do my stitching, I'm stitching from the inside and I like to start somewhere into this area right here where it gets narrow because you're not going to see the beginning and the ending of your stitch when you go to crimp it to go to uh, forming for the bow tie on there. So I kind of start somewhere at the, where it kind of, where, where the base of the ear kind of curves in. 
and I do back tack and then I just stitch. Now what I also like to do is for this section, I do like to increase my stitch length because this is a stitch that's kind of that's seen. So I'm gonna bring this up to like three and a half and we're going to do a quick little back tack right here and we're just gonna stitch all the way around and then remove our clips as we go. Now, if the fabric shifts a little bit, I'm not worried about that. I'm gonna be trimming it all off anyway. So now you got everything all stitched all the way around. So now we're just going to get our pinking shears and we're just going to trim, trim this up. my glasses back on for this. All right, so just carefully do all my trimming all the way around. Just be careful so you don't clip your stitches. I'm just doing the edges, just, just matching up everything along the edge. Sometimes it gets a little hung up right there on that seam. There's a lot of bulk that's right there. That's why cutting away some of that excess material makes it a little bit easier. Martelli has some great pinking shears. They also have a scalloped edge one. Works really good for this too. There we go. All right, so that part is all done. See all that? All clipped, all ready to go. So now's the next part. Let's go to the bow ties. Now we're, now we're gonna start with our bow ties. So you kind of determine which direction do you want your bow tie to look. And I kind of want my stripes to be going across. So I'm just gonna grab my vinyl. This one here has got a stripe in it. I'm just gonna grab my template. I'm gonna have my vinyl folded and I'm just gonna set it on the fold and then I just get my rotary cutter and I just clip that out. Now, I think you might need a 45 for doing the bow tie. Let me grab that. Particularly if you're cutting with the vinyl. I'm just gonna go ahead and cut out my piece that I'm gonna need. I do like the, four, the, the 28 for this little curve right here. There's a slight curve on the bow tie right here. I can get the whole thing with my 28 and a little curve right here. Now in the instructions, I say to go ahead and double up, but I found you don't have to. You can easily do it without having to double up um, the vinyl. On some of them, I did that. So I'm gonna show you um, this one right here and this one right here. I have the vinyl on the back and on the front, and I found that I just hot glued it. I just used some hot glue just to, to seal it up. I did it on this one here too. I hot glued it, and here I probably need to do a little more touch of hot glue, so I just hot glued it. But I did one without doubling it up, and it is right here. So this one here is just a single layer, and I found it did just as well without having to double it up. So 
here's my one piece, but you also need to cut another little piece. So I think in the instructions I say about a half inch wide by about three inches long. So I'm just going to go ahead and cut off a piece here off the bottom. About a half inch, just a half inch piece. This is a little bit longer than three inches, but this is the piece that you're going to wrap around the center. To make the bow tie, I'm going to show you like on this one right here. You're going to fold it in half towards you, fold it in half, and then fold it back again. So I'm going to get this straight so you can see what we're doing. We're going to fold this in half here and pinching it in the center, kind of pinching it. Grab my clips because we're going to need this for this. The clips are going to help hold everything in place. And then you're going to use a little bit of hot glue to kind of help set everything too. So you're going to fold it in half. And then you're going to take this little piece right here. And then you're going to fold it back on itself. And then you're going to fold this one back on itself. See how it's kind of forming that bow tie? And then I'm going to grab a clip and I'm going to hold, I'm going to clip that. I'm going to hold that in place just like that. Now here's where you could go get a little bit of hot glue and we're going to put it into here. Now if you were doing the fabric one, you're going to take your piece. So this one I've already got some stabilizer on it. So I'm just going to fold this in half and I'm going to cut out two of these. So I'm just going to set it on here and I'm going to cut out two. So I'm going to cut off a piece where it's going to be big enough to cut out two. So you don't need a whole lot of fabric to make your little bow tie. So if I was going to do a fabric one, I'm cutting out two pieces. Make sure everything's all cut. So here's one. And then we're going to cut a second one. Same thing, just like before, laying it on the fold and cutting out my second one. Then you're going to take these to the sewing machine. You're going to place them right sides together. You're going to stitch all the way around, but leave an opening on one side. Clip your corners, all your little angles here. Maybe do some little clips on your curves, then flip it out and press it. And then you're going to fold the opening in, and then you're going to top stitch all the way around. That's how you're going to do the fabric one. But you're going to do the same thing. You're going to fold it into itself, then fold it back. And then you're going to have your second little piece right here. Now this is where you're going to need your ribbon. So you're going to have your little piece of ribbon. And we're also, now we're going to go over to the ironing, uh, to the ironing station because I have a hot glue gun that's over there. And I'm going to show you how I construct the bow tie with the vinyl. So remember we folded it in half. I'll show you again. We folded it in half to ourselves and then we folded that center piece back. And then we folded the other center piece back. So you kind of got this little look right here. So I'm going to go ahead and pinch this on the right side. So now I'm looking here at the back side. And I'm going to add a touch of glue in here inside just to kind of, kind of hold it in place. So that, that's just going to kind of help hold it. That way I can be able to take my clip off at some point. You can even put a dollop of glue here on the front. Just whatever you want to kind of help hold all of that in place. You're just getting it to hold it. And once that gets starts to settle, I'm going to flip it over. I'm going to have the back side to me. I'm going to lay my ribbon 
And you don't need a long, super long piece. I think you only need about half of this. So I'm going to cut this in half. So you need about 15 inches, 18 inches or so. And this one is about 18 inches. I'm going to find my center with my ribbon. And I'm going to add another little dollop of glue right here. Just a just a tiny drop, and I'm going to center my ribbon onto that little drop of glue right there. Just kind of go hold it in place. Now here's where you get your second little piece. We're going to wrap this center piece around. So I'm going to glue the one end. So I'm going to, here's where I'm going to put another dollop of glue right here. And I'm going to take this one end, and I'm going to glue it onto there. Kind of hold it till it sets. I'm using um, a multi, I think it's on the high temp right now, so if you have a low temp it might be a little easier for holding it with your fingers. So I'm just holding it there. Then I'm going to take this other piece and I'm going to wrap it around. So I'm going to put another piece of glue right here and I'm going to wrap this around it. Right here, put another piece of glue, and I'm going to wrap it around, and then hold it in place until it sets. Then I'm going to just trim off this excess, and it's ready to go. All right, so now we can go back to the bunnies, and we can start forming the ears to attach our bow tie. So I got this little bit excess right here, so I'm just going to trim that off. Right up close, because that's going to be on the back side. You're not going to even see it. So there you go. So here's your bow tie. And you can, you can form it a little bit, but that, there's our bow tie, all ready to go. So going back to the one that we're working on, now here's where you're going to need clips again. The clips are going to help you form your ears and then hold it in place for you to um, do all of your tying on it. So I kind of bring my ears together and I'm looking for my narrowest point, which is about right here, about right here. So I'm going to take a clip and I'm going to put it so that it's going to be the same on both sides. So that's where I know where I'm going to start doing my forming of my ears. So opening it up, now I'm going to take my ears right to where I had that clip and I'm going to fold it in half toward the lining, fold the lining in half so it's kind of pinched. And as we did the bow tie, I'm going to fold it back in on itself like this. So you've just how we did the bow tie, folded it in half, and then taken the edges and then folding them back to that center half, back to that center half. See how that ear is starting to form like that? You'll be able to manipulate it in a minute, I promise you. Then I'm going to take my clip and I'm going to hold that clip right there. The clip that I had used, I'm going to use it again at that point. So know that I had this one at that same point, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to fold it in half towards the set, towards the, the lining, like the lining's meeting. And then we're going to fold it back. And then fold it back. And just like we did the first year, we're going to take that same clip and we're going to grab it from behind. We're going to clip it. So now your ears should look something like this. So now we're just going to turn them. We're going to turn your ears into whichever direction you want it to go. See that? So here's where you might want to get a bigger clip. Grabbing my bigger clip and I'm going to just kind of hold it. Just so that it's holding it. It just has to hold it for a second. Because now we're going to get your bow tie. And we're going to bring it around and we're going to double tie it 
So instead of like a regular shoelace tie, like a single, I'm going to wrap it twice. Grab my two ends and I'm going to cinch it above my clip. Cinch it tight above my clip. Now I can pull my clip out and it's got it nice and cinched. And go ahead and finish my tie. I'm just going to do a simple bow. Once I got my bow attached, now I just kind of mess with it a little bit. Straighten it out, get it the way I want it to look. And there you have your little bunny ear basket. How easy is that? Fill it with all kinds of fun goodies. Put some little fabric eggs in there. Just have so much fun with them. So that is showing you how to make it with this one. Now I showed you one earlier. If I wanted my ears to be longer, all I did was when I got up to cutting, I got up to about, I kind of made a mark on my template and I got, um, I cut up to there and then I just slid my template up like about an inch or inch and a half, two inches, matched it up and then just continued cutting. So that's how I made this one with the longer ears. And again, when you're going to do the applique, you're going to applique it onto your piece with the fleece on it before you've done any sewing at all. Super, super, super easy. I think that is everything that you need to know on making the bunny ear basket with the bow tie. Again, if you're going to do it with the fabric, you're going to fold it the exact same way. You're just going to have it all finished off with the fabric. All right, so that's it. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. You have a wonderful day and I hope you enjoy making the bunny ear basket with the bow tie. Go ahead and make some and share your creations. Thank you so much, everybody. Bye-bye.